morning, everybody. Good yeah, morning. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, coffee boaters. Oh my god, look at our glasses. No! <laughs> Where did you get your glasses from? I just from? found them on my desk. Who's the hell are those glasses? I've never seen those glasses before. No, that's somebody that's left them in the house. And it's probably texted me saying, have I left my glasses at your house? And I've gone, no. Which shape suits me most? This, the Jürgen, I like you most. or the round? No, I like when you can't hardly see them. That's the they Jürgen. They are quite the nice, Jürgen. that shape. No, not the Jürgen. I hate the Jürgen. But you can't see them? No, but they're like, Ugh, it's just I don't like them. Headmaster yuck. Do you know what they're like? They're the kind uh, of they're kind of glasses that sort of I don't know, slightly sick inducing men who are into weird stuff wear. Exactly. Oh, and God, you wear that... them all the time. Oh my fucking Christ, but I am a bit of a sick man into weird shit. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> Morning everyone, how are we all? Oh god, I forgot you were even here. I do apologise. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about today? We're gonna to be talking about smacking kids. It should be banned. Apparently there's a loophole in the in England. Uh, which means that if you have reasonable reason, mm -hmm. a reasonable concern, or your situation is reasonable enough, which, which means what uh, you can you can smack your kids still. So I find it hang funny. on, we're not going to talk about that. No, no, so we're coming up, man. Babe, why do you always control what because I say? Because we have at the to front? go. Because we say we say it all again. It's, and... It doesn't present well, babe. Just sorry. We're talking about that and we're talking about how that feeds into, like the smoking ban, are we being controlled to within an inch of our lives of being able to do the things that we should do? To what extent should we be what allowed extent? by the state? Is it a nanny state telling us what to do? When should we not do it? When should we? Um, we're also going to be talking about, let's name them, the woman who does the numbers on maths, uh, Julia Hartley Brewer, Racism Row, uh, and we're going to be talking about the joy of a yawn. Oh, yeah. The anatomy. Oh, don't you're going to make me yawn now. You're going to make me yawn. Mm. It's fascinating. The anatomy Whenever of a yawn. people talk about why people yawn, everybody's got their own idea, but we have... Um, I'll find some other glasses. We have a comprehensive list. Why? Someone said they don't like them. Well, God, somebody on there says they don't like them, and it's all right if I say I don't like them. Now, I put those up there because they're my favourite. Those mine. are not your glasses. Oh, my Christ. You steal every single pair. <laughs> It's so infuriating. You know, we need a bloody we need a bloody glasses brand. Oh yes. Come on. I can see clear. That's better. Yeah, you're right. Any a other no bloody rim. couple would have had somebody throwing bloody glasses. So what you're at saying, right what you're saying is that you like to see more of my face. Yes, darling, that's I nice. do. Because you've got a lovely face. Oh, that's really sweet. I don't like your face being hidden. Okay, guys. So who here has been smacked as a child? And then I'm going to ask a more challenging question of who has smacked. A child and regrets it and right, realizes I'm, the error. Of I'm just going to come out very strong on this. I'm going to come out, Piers Morgan. I know we've spoken about this before, but it's always a topic that comes up, and we are still not where we need to be. And where we need to be is there is no grey area. Nobody, but nobody ever, ever should hit a child. That's me done. Hang on. And I and I. And I know that lots of people disagree with that, and I'm fine with that. So do, do please just do say, but no, I'll go as far as this. Right. Nobody is ever going to convince me differently because I also don't believe that I should hit Mark if I don't agree with him or he should hit me if I don't agree with him or Mark goes out to the bus stop and somebody bigger than him hits him. And that's what it is. It is brutal. I think it is damaging. And... Um, I'm shocked and horrified whenever I see anyone even take a child's hand and do that. Oh my God, it's it's horrific to me. Show my thoughts. Okay. okay. Well, clearly laid your store. Laid out well, because for me, there's no caveats. There's no ca okay. Am I allowed to say something? I think there's a caveat. You better not think there's a caveat. Oh, or what? I'll get a good slosh. <laughs> I think there is zero, zero justification for smacking a child. If you, you know, it's just, you shouldn't smack anyone, ever. And I do think it's, I think it's even extra perniciously cruel because the, the confusion that I had as a child, you were hit as a child, I was hit as a child, um, or to quote my nan, who I love dearly, bless, bless her, it was a different age, a different era, uh, I got sloshed. And what a word. Um, should careful or I'll slosh you. And a slosh was very different because what came with a slosh wasn't a smack, a tap, a rap on the knuckles. It was the entire body. 
behind a really adult army. Did she hit you regularly? Yes, she'd slosh How you. often? She, oh, I, don't, it's not, I wasn't with her all the time. No, but just out of interest, if you were staying with her for a month in the summer, how many times did When you I was it? very young, she would probably hit me five or six times across the summer. Just awful. But she there would be there what? would be different things. There'd be slap on the legs that would hurt. There'd be a slosh around the she would never hit me around the face. Terrible. She would throw you push and and my mum, I'm not throwing you under the bridge here. Mum, you never really hit, but you kind of threw and you kind of pushed. And it was just an era. It was just an era mm. of my mum of... just my mum just used to hit me in the way that everybody I knew in that time is being hit. And you know, you yeah, but anyway, can I just finish the thing I was going to say? Because I think what's particularly pernicious about smacking your kids as well is well, what's confusing for kids is this happens in a domestic setting from a person who theoretically loves you. And I think therein lies real confusion if it happens too often for children when it comes to what the meaning of an intimate relationship is. I do genuinely think that if you see, witness and experience loss of temper, huge fights and rows as a child, not, you don't literally go, that's the right way to conduct my life, but it becomes a trigger. It becomes a familiar thing that you might reach to when you are unable to articulate but I, yourself. But I think, yeah, that's the big, the big terrible thing that everyone would see as obvious is not good. But I also think just, this, I just think even that, you know, because people say, oh, a little tap on the bum, oh, a little tap on the hand. No, I think you're still saying... The, there isn't a scale for me because even that is saying it's it's violent. It's like really shouting at a child is violent mm, and, and disturbs them as well. And I I think you're teaching them that when you can't get it across, you hit. So even that. Oh. No. Now, Anne-Marie, I was clouted once as a teen. I absolutely deserved it. My pops feels terrible now, but I was a cow bag. It never happened again. I don't believe in smacking at all. Your lovely dad was actually right that he felt terrible because what he will have done is he will have lost his cool and he'll have hit me, hit you. Now, you being a cowbag obviously will need some discipline, some boundary, but hitting you, and especially I think when a teenager is all mixed up and angry with their parents and angry with the world, to be hit then I think is just as bad because it's more frustration, it's more misunderstanding. So that's why your dad's a lovely dad because he felt terrible because really he, he knew in his heart of hearts he wasn't actually going to do it. Yeah, but it's going to cause more distance. But also that speaks to the thing that what, what your dad did there was he went to an, a sort of inarticulate version of showing an emotion because he hadn't yeah. been shown or probably had a role model himself to know what to do. I mean... No, moral... because he said she said he only did it once so he probably just did lose his... Yeah, 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 got absolutely. Bit, got a bit desperate, no, like absolutely. anybody could. Yeah. Like anybody could. You could just get to the point, you go, oh, for God's yeah. sake, I get that. I want to share what Vicky has but, to say here, because this is how I remember feeling around my nan. I was hit as a child and the hurt was in my heart. Exactly. Mainly, I was also, as a young child, shook, and that was the worst of it. And I think that's the weird thing, that it yeah. comes from someone who theoretically is your guardian, your carer, the person who loves you the most, your, the person who you turn to for sustenance and care. Um, oh, it just makes me shudder. And as Dawn Decker says off the back world. of that, if adults hit each other, it's domestic abuse. Exactly. So it's so confusing for a child. If you hit a stranger, it's GBH. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I absolutely believe. I listen. I don't think everybody that hits their child is evil. Is evil at all? But I'm brave enough to say that I think that people that do just don't understand how awful it is. Okay. Well, a topic coming out of this that I want to talk about is, uh, or that James O'Brien actually flagged up this morning. He said it's curious. Should we just do a couple of comments? Uh, uh, yes, sorry. It's quite a lot of people have answered. Uh, Gemma Perry, I was smacked once as a child by my dad across the face. I Ooh. used to smack my kids, but I regret it now. I think I used to take my tiredness out yeah. of them as I was a I, single, single exactly. mum. I think it's important not to kind of, I think that's really important what you said, yeah. Gemma, because you recognised that you were taking out something that you were struggling with on your child, which is exactly... Now, listen, I'm really lucky I wasn't a single mum, had a good partner, had support, had people I could talk to, had, you know, so, you know, and, and wasn't worrying about bills and da-da-da. So I understand that I'm in a really good position to like have this opinion 
But as 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 um, they were saying on LBC today, it's not necessarily about the nuts and bolts, is it? Like you can't really enforce this because how's a four year old going to make a complaint? But it's about perceptions. And if the government says this is totally not allowed because it's not right, it will help people how will I it, think, how will in they the times it? when they're really struggling. Well, they can't. But it's more about perceptions. It's, about, it's about perceptions. It's about like. This is not yeah. an acceptable way. It's, it's about signalling. Mm. It's about putting out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Goodman, my dad proper hit me, made me sore from it. I was swearing. Mm. He heard me. I never swore again as a child. So it worked. Mm. This is often the line that's used, isn't it, by older generations, which is, and by those who sign up to it, which is, look, every now and then in extremists and often as a kind of, you know, what is it, a carrot and a stick and a sort of an opportunity to shift the behaviour. Look, I'm sure a child will change their behaviour. I'm sure you did. But do you want a child to change their behaviour based on unbridled fear and mm. pain? And what, and I promise you now, without getting all navel gazy kind of psychotherapy mumbo, mumbo mm. jumbly, if violence is connected to any potential change in emotions, it both leads to trauma and it leads to, uh, you know, reenacting that trauma and and imparting it and doing the same thing to someone else. I hurt feel people, bad for hurt you. People. I yeah. think that wasn't fair on well, you. Well, this is awful. Look at this. My country pumpkin. My dad shoved a lit cigar in my eye. I would never what? lay a finger on my eye. My God, I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ. Good God. Well, unfortunately, country pumpkin, that is horrific. Good right? God. And unfortunately... These bans would not stop something like that. This is these bans are about trying to say to society it's not right to hit to to hit your child, smack your child. Mm. But that is like off the scale, isn't it? That's yeah. like nothing would stop a person if you're the sort of person that could do that. Right. I just want to spin this out slightly in the way that James O'Brien did at the top of his hour this morning. I really liked it as I was driving back to certain ads. He's kind of conflating this, the smacking ban or potential to ban smacking in England as well as Scotland and Wales uh, and the smoking ban for under 15s. And he's asking the question, at what point should the state stop us from being able to do things? At what point should we be allowed to make our own decisions? You know, in what areas of our lives should we be told what to do? And in what areas of our lives should we have the freedom to do what we want to do? And if you don't know, the smoking ban is around the idea. I think it passed its first reading in, in the House of Commons. And this is the idea that anyone um, 15 and under from when this law becomes law, uh, Generation Alpha, is it, I think? Or uh, is that what they call them? Generation Alpha? Generation X? Um, you will not be able to buy cigarettes for the rest of your life. So, of course, there's the pros and cons of whether that will work or not. But at what point should the state tell us what to do and curtail our rights, if you want? Should we be told how to parent? Should we be told what dangerous things to do, like smoking? Uh, and if so, where do we draw the line? If smoking bans are, are, are right, why aren't drinking bans right? And all this kind of stuff. What do you think? Before all of that, I just want to quickly read because I can see Christopher Cundles in the room. Oh, Christopher. Christopher, you, Christopher dear Christopher in Sydney, was at the epicentre, guys, of oh, the awful God. Sydney stabbing. We are going to be talking about it in a really unfortunate manner, actually, as well again today, Christopher. But I just wanted to give another shout out to Chris. Morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Missed a few lives. It's been a really rough time, but I'll get there, and there are always others worse off. Oh, mate, you were pretty that was much petrifying. You feel valid in what you're feeling because you're right to feel it. Uh, I hope everyone as well. was right there when the stabbing was happening. Absolutely mm, petrifying. Poor thing. It must so, be so scary. Anyway, everyone's sending you all, mm. all of our love. Um, so what, you know, going back to this idea, so what, what, <laughs> look, Good Ship Lollipop. So in 100 years, I, I had a feeling Good Ship Lollipop, you might think we're in a nanny state. In 100 years, there'll be zero smoking. I've got some tobacco seeds that are illegal to grow for smoking already. Are you stocking up? <laughs> I love that. Um, Sandy, so many things harm a child. Smacking, parents who abuse alcohol in the home, parents arguing, rouse, criticize children, shouting, some homes must be hell. Oh, don't it, because it makes me want to cry when I think about it, when I think how many homes are with yeah. frightened children. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Lee Doran, uh, I think they will still find a way to buy cigarettes, drugs. Really. But what do you think about this idea of the, of the state telling us what's good for us? Because like, there's so many things that are bad for us that they wouldn't think, wouldn't, I mean, you said it, alcohol. No. Costs, costs the, if you just isolate the cost of alcohol on uh, the NHS in an acute fashion, and what I mean by that is direct medical, you know, impacts on the body, health impacts, and also, you know, emergencies, accidents, etc., it's it runs to something like four billion. So why so why would you ban smoking and not alcohol? Is one worse than the other? 
fit for your body? Well, I mean... No, no, but it's an interesting I mean, question, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Because, oh, I see. You're it's because the lawmakers, the libertines, the libert... How do you say it? Um, they they want to keep drinking. <laughs> They want to keep drinking. Maybe they oh, just think... Reese Roberts a... makes a really sharp point, razor sharp. It's a funny thing regarding the notion of an any state because we're steered away from things the state deems wrong for us, but in the same notion, crucial things we need to know are kept from exactly. us. Exactly. Bing, bang, bong, on the money. Um, I feel really conflicted about this because I think it's about being able to work out what our choices and where those choices are made by us so, for example, I always have a problem when I hear, you know, and I recognize addiction, whenever I've heard that someone has, like, for example, um, George Best, he had liver transplants, the NHS bent over backwards, did everything for him. Obviously, that's not going to solve the problem of addiction. And I'm, I'm not talking and about drank addiction. Again, didn't he? And then he drank again. And even I, as a kind of, although when it all happened, I wasn't sober, I remember th having a real struggle with the idea of, hang on, this many chances, the whole system kind of catering for you, keeping you alive. And yet you still turn back. My granddad, after his first heart attack, returned to smoking and eating terrible diets. At what point do we say, actually, for the state, don't do this? Because for the state, it's more beneficial. But then how do we pick and choose what those things are? It's interesting. Did you hear um, James O'Brien this morning talking about this? And he said, the thing is, we have to recognise that not everybody knows stuff. You know, so he said, you know, when the wah wah wahs, I say, well, you know, we don't, we just want to be able to do whatever we want. Yes, there are people. He was telling a story. I don't know if you remember this years ago. This this young I'm couple popping up comments on the screen. This young, very young couple that had a baby, and um, it was deemed in court that they absolutely loved this baby and they were loving parents, but they were very very poor financially. They were really struggling. And um, they didn't have baby food and they were mulching up the same food that they were having, giving it to their baby, right? right? right. And the salt can content killed this baby. Yeah, well, that's right. Because they just it. didn't know. Right. And the thing is, we can, like, from an educated POV, think, well, this we shouldn't need a law on this because everybody knows this, but not everybody is brought up to understand these things. And if you're brought up with everybody in your in your family smoking or everybody eating processed food, more bans on processed food, please, um, then, um, you, you know, you're not going to grow up with those habits if you've mm. had a poorer education, if you've had all these things. So there is some stuff that people need to be supported in their decisions, definitely. Like banning smoking, if you've, uh, hitting, if you've been hit all your life, you wouldn't know that that's wrong. Mm. You wouldn't know that that's deemed as a... So, so even though you can't really apply the law, having the law helps that understanding. Mm. Like, you know, people would say, well, is, is there anybody really that doesn't know how to eat healthy? Is there anybody really that doesn't know that smoking is bad for you? Well, yeah, there are plenty of people. But, okay, so, okay, so you're someone who... That was his argument. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. I thought, yeah, yeah. But you're someone who smokes. You know that it's bad for you. You know that it's probably going to be the thing that ultimately gets you. Um, it's then going to be a sort of pressure on the NHS. Mm. And you're, you're lighting up anyway. Should we remove, should everyone have that right to self, essentially self-harm? And at what point is that yeah. self-harm something, mm. again, let, let's look at the junk food thing, for example. You know, self-harm, you know, an addiction, you're absolutely right. Lots of comments coming up here about, you know, you need resources to help with addiction. It, very much all of these rules about stopping and banning and preventing are a band-aid to stop an action uh, without any real, real thought to the sort of grassroots cause of it. What causes any kind of addiction? A desire to soften the reality of things, the desire to numb oneself. It's a shortcut to it's life, isn't cut, it? Yeah, How do yeah. I make myself feel better this minute? And it's a short minute. reward. It's a little reward and all this kind of thing. If you start banning everything, I mean, you could get to a place where actually petrol is so bad, we should ban short haul flights and all this kind of stuff. And then is it's that... It's interesting. What, where did the where decisions did the come? Where did the decisions what? come? How do we... What th what was the question you asked earlier, which was really good, we were going to ask? What in your life would, would you, you... Like, in the world as it is today, and if you could choose something to ban because you think it is so bad <laughs> for society... So, so mine would, would definitely... I mean, smacking, I totally agree with it. Smoking, I agree with it. 
I've become because obsessed with Forever Chemical. I still don't know how that's going to... And, and, and processed, highly processed foods, because governments don't really want to beat the shit out of these manufacturers that are making money off the back that we know. I mean, our, our ultra-processed food consumption in this country is it's so massive. high compared to the rest of Europe. Where do you draw the line, Jennifer Winter? If someone gets diabetes due to unhealthy lifestyle, do they deserve health care? Yes. Should sugar then be banned? Yes, exactly. And like, oh, well, if you don't exercise because exercise is one of the very best things that we can do for our health, for everything, for bones, yeah. for organs, for brain, for everything. I'm going to pop up some of your answers whilst we're talking. Processed so, food, Lisa Robson. Uh, you know what? It's evil in so many gambling. different ways, processed food, isn't it? It's interesting. Yeah, it removes the fucking ability gambling. to gamble and you'll remove, uh, you potentially remove a huge, huge, huge addiction. Though I love that you have ceasefire now on your... Banning things just puts it further underground. Look at other drugs. Well, this is the problem. That's speaks With smoking, to... I think, will go underground. But that's, again, that's a really important point, L because yes that speaks to the fact that you i think you can have a sort of pincer movement on most of these things i think you can have you can curtail the availability i actually in a way somebody said there it's already underground of quite a lot of smoking isn't it people have to hide people are vaping like fucking nutters well one thing i want to say so about smoking, I, I genuinely think i mean i actually think the way they've gone about dealing with smoking has been quite successful i think the way in which it's been graduated gradually removed from public places it's been kind of squeezed. I, I, I think there's an example there of how it has... The problem with it is, though, the, the statistics and the facts really are blurred by the fact that vaping is rapidly coming up on the inside as a replacement and seems to be overtaking smoking. But I do think it's a pincer movement where you have some kind of curtailment legally, uh, educatively, and then you have some kind of sort of grassroots solution which is some kind of acknowledgement of why this thing is happening. Unless you understand why most youngsters want to get out of their heads on spliff because they're very unhappy with what the world is offering them. You know, but, but how do you solve that? How do you solve the world? You can't, mm. can you? Um, let's just have a look at a few other comments and then we'll move on. Uh, forever com chemicals and vaping. Forever chemicals. Legal exactly. cannabis. And what raised. about mm. the millions of, it's is it millions, am I exaggerating, of tonnes of sewage that are being pumped un, pumped into our waters all the time, day in, 24-7? It will yeah, be prohibition. Yeah, prohibition. Oh, ocean and therapy. Uh, yeah, it will be like prohibition. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if anyone really believes this smoking thing is going to work. I don't see how it can. I, can't, I don't understand it. The first thing Kiki said in the car on the radio when she heard just, it, she said, well, they'll just buy it off someone else. Get, yeah. <laughs> and how are you going to? I still don't know how. If you're 15 now, but when you're pesticides 40, and plastics, when you're for, people... when you're 45 and you go to buy cigarettes, they actually going to ask for ID. I don't know. How's that going to actually work? There's a lot of people here asking for things around the environment, and yeah. isn't that interesting? interesting. Yeah. That isn't something they nanny state us. Look at all the articles that come up about cancer causing and the the actual damage that it's doing to the environment and our own physical environment but there's you know again there's that the, it's 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 a lot of money involved mm. in that isn't mm. it yeah, follow the money follow, follow the, money. the money okay moving on let's let's move on to should we do the joy of a yawn before we hit the woman who does numbers on count on that show on channel four yes yeah let's do the joy of the yawn what does a yawn first of all let's ask, let's ask the classic questions why do you think we yawn? Because I love every. Oh no, don't. See, I've gone now. <sighs> oh my god, I had a proper yawn. That was good. Did I make you do that? Wow. I wish I could make you do other things. Oh, no, I mean, the but power listen, of facial movement. So, why do you think we yawn? The thing that people will say most often, isn't it? Because you need this more is a real oxygen. One. And then I've heard the other reason oh. why when somebody yawns, it's not going to go, why somebody yawns and you yawn, this is one that's said often, is because it's a survival technique in that the person that's yawning is taking extra oxygen. So your body no. goes... No. <laughs> no. I've heard that quite a few times. Yeah, but I've heard that quite a few like times. like that? Sort of like... Oh, look, Victoria Moore, isn't it an oxygen thing? I've heard it was this. Overreaching for the activity. I heard it was a communal signal in the pride mm. or the group, the tribe, to say to the others, it's time to sleep. So the reason a yawn is catching is that when, ah. when the elder yawns, uh, quite literally, when the mice on the mouse organ go to sleep, <laughs> puss goes to sleep or the other way around. Oh, so when, good. Right. 
If anybody's yawning now, <laughs> can you tell us? Say yawn if you're Hello, yawning. Azzy, hi, Azzy Boya, yawning back is an empathy That's reaction. That's right. It is. is it that is. That's say? what it says in the article. Do you want your article up here? But um, also, listen, I've been doing this with the family, but I'm the only one who can do it because everybody's got anxiety except for me. They're but, all yawning now. <laughs> but basically, this is a little trick that if you are feeling really anxious, roll your tongue onto the roof of your mouth. Do it now. And then try to say the letter R, not as in R down here, but the letter R, R. Say it three times with your tongue on the roof of your mouth. No, you're doing R, say R. Oh. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing a whirring R? You don't have a whirring R. I've got my tongue on the top of my mouth. No, but wait. You don't say R like that. Of course, I don't have my tongue on the top of my mouth when I say "ra" normally. Ra. The well, well, no, feel bad about do, my... Does Ruh. anyone remember the yawning man Ruh. in Tom Thumb? No, I don't. I used Ruh. to love Tom Thumb. What, did he just run lick, around and yawn? Good shit lollipop says, lick the roof of your mouth to stop yawning. Oh. Well, they say, whatever I do with my tongue, it makes me yawn. <laughs> Never makes um, me yawn. Victoria Moore, I've yawned about four times now. <laughs> Gonna have to nap. Happy read. I yawned and dribbled. <laughs> <laughs> so that that exercise to make you yawn will will reduce your anxiety. You, what else do you do with your tongue to make you relax? Uh, I'm asleep. But okay, um, what, what was the what, R about? Because yeah. it because it because it, it makes you yawn. So you go R R. Oh, oh, you sing it like mm. uh, that's how I did it first time. You then went R. Hang on a minute, you're changing the R. <laughs> R. <laughs> Oh, God, the only one yawning. <laughs> okay, that's getting you. No, hang on, but then you went, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Matty, you should do the workout. Matty's doing workouts because your yawning <laughs> sounds are making me yawn. <laughs> so sorry. That was so funny. Oh, that's funny. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the reasons. What's that? I mean, I do love you both. Oh, from India. Who's that? Hi, Mahit. Mohit Love Dalal. your content. Big fan of your content. Oh, oh new thank member. You. Well, welcome. 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 Welcome, Mahit. Welcome, Mahit. Welcome to the Mahit. family. Every. Oh, oh, oh. Mohit. Mohit. Tell us if we're pronouncing it right. If not, write it phonetically for us so we can get it right. There. Right. Okay, so. if you just jumped in on us now, you'd think, what the hell are these talking about? <laughs> in fact, everyone says that most of the time. Um, have you got any other facts from this article? Is there... Yeah, yeah. Oh, Let's oh get right, it sorry, on. I didn't realise. Yes, get it on. What causes yawning? Oh, that's maybe so, one of your... So a cat yawning. we've got this massive picture of this cat yawning. So yawning often occurs when we're tired, which of course we know. Boredom, which happens to you but all the time. Essentially, oh. it helps. Yeah. It's... Oh, no. oh, here we go. Essentially, it, it, there's lots of triggers. So boredom is one of them. Um, so if you're having a particularly boring day, day at work, you might find yourself yawning. But I want to know why when you're bored, you yawn. It doesn't explain that. To trigger sleep, to get you out of there. No. Uh, stress and anxiety. I've also been linked to increased yawning. Studies have shown that fish, reptiles, birds and mammals all tend to yawn more before That's and after stressful dogs. situations. I've noticed when the dogs have had a fight, straight afterwards, they go to opposite corners yeah. and they yawn. Right. So what was I just saying earlier about the tongue thing? Right. Because when you're stressed, if you yawn, it will reduce your stress. That, right. And that's what animals are And that's what animals are doing after yeah. a fight. Um, so it's a way for our bodies to counteract. This is the really important thing. Shallow breathing. So because intense, I've man. noticed so people that have, such shallow, an intense that have shallow breathing are much more anxious. Yeah, I agree. I'm always saying to my I'm daughters, breathing up here. You're breathing here. And in fact, when I took them to breathe osteopath, down. they said, your children aren't breathing from here. They said, they've got to uh, breathe. Do you pause for breath? Do you breathe deeply? I do. Yeah. Catching a yawn. Um, That's what we've just done to all of you guys. Yeah, hearing, thinking or seeing, da, 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 which we've just done, um, it's a form of social mirroring. So it is. It's an empathy. I can't remember who said it, oh, but you were right. Look at this. Something we do unconsciously to mimic the behaviour of those around us. I love that. So also air pressure changes. So when you're on a flight, this could trigger you. Trigger. That's why when Dina farts, she yawns. Yeah, exactly. She always does. She always yawns. It relieves the pressure buildup. And that's why we all yawn, to relieve the pressure buildup of her farts. Um, brain temperature. Look at that. Brings Just some me. of the research into why yawning happens has pointed its ability to cool the, the brain. brain. People yawn more during winter than in summer. 
Why would they do oh, it more in winter? It, because it's if cooler got... outside your head. So you're letting more cold air in by opening no, your mouth. No, to cool the brain. So yes. why would you do it more in the summer? Well, because in winter you, uh, you're well. already cool. <laughs> Sleep deprivation, excessive yawning, we know about that. These are Medication. triggers. Medication. Listen to this. Serotonin reputique inhibitors, SSR. So basically antidepressants, um, anti-anxiety, um, can not just because they can make you more fatigued, but just the actual effect on the brain can make you sick. I think that's interesting. I do, I think it is really interesting. Again, Underlying your, health conditions. When your jaw hurts, thanks, Ella, you look sexy in that shirt. When your jaw, <laughs> does, when your jaw hurts when you yawn, it's supposed to be a sign of low iron. Is your jaw hurting? Sometimes your jaw locks out, doesn't it? Wow. Sorry. Mighty. Get it back. It's all right. I... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. We didn't, we didn't do the underlying health conditions. Can you reduce yeah. it a bit so you can see what people say? No, go on. Right. In rare cases, excessive yawning could be a sign of a bigger problem. What, what like you're really bored? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, tell them, don't just go, oh, well, it, can it, can it be linked to, well, it can be linked to heart attacks, epilepsy, and neurological disorders. So uh, now SMS. everyone's going to have no. health anxiety. Okay. Why have you but said this, this is very excessive. And it, and it has to happen for a long time. And you also have symptoms as fatigue, shortness of breath, chest pain, headaches. You've yawned muscles. throughout our entire relationship. <laughs> you're, you're, you're literally losing interest as you speak now in your I, own yawning subject. I actually... On the days that I have ADHD medication, I yawn less. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we it's go. It's no minky moo. You know what it is? It's the talking about it. It yeah. triggers it. Okay, we've got to move on. We've got to move on. Yeah, because Sorry, we've got a guys. meeting. Uh, so finally, that woman on that show where she puts numbers on a wall and then tells people to make sums out of them. And um, it's always very, um, very good at very, telling people how to behave. Yeah, very strong, very strongly opinionated, huge supporter of uh, Israel's uh, aggression in uh, Palestine, um, shoots down anyone who kind of is critical. Um, she has been forced to... This, uh, is in the in, this is in the independent, isn't it? She's been, she, alongside, actually, Julia yeah, Hartley, uh, Julia Hartley Brewer. Brewer. I don't know what's happened to her. She always seemed quite reasonable years ago just on the radio. Just, she's just become... She's become a, rampant oh, it's, and rampant. It's, it's what some people do to get famous. And it's think? very... Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, why would you want to be famous? Anyway, what they did here... And Christopher like Cundall, I'm so, I do apologise that the, the, the genuine trauma of what's happened in Sydney yeah. has been hijacked, in a sense, by this. So what they've both done, or what Rachel to Riley specifically they did. They both did very quickly. Was they they connected the uh, terrible, terrible stabbing, which has is, is not a terror incident. There has been a subsequent attack, sadly, where I don't think there's been any fatalities, have there, Christopher? But there have been injuries, uh, and, and that has been classed as a terror attack after this. But prior to that, um, the lady who does numbers, she connected this to Islamic terror extremism. She suggested it was a terror attack, and she likened it and linked it to the rise, and this is quite astonishing, the rise in support for Palestine. A clearly racist conflation, a fake conflation, a very sort of mealy-mouthed apology then appeared on X, likewise with Julia Brewer, She said it was a globalised intifada. I mean... Anyway, this is just a sensationalist conflating of unconnected things in a desire to suggest that, you know, um, there's a sort of irrational hatred at the heart of any support for Palestine, where there is a zero, zero, zero connection. Julia, Hart, Julia Hartley Brewer, who I used to work with occasionally, I thought she was, she was a nice, she seemed like a nice woman years ago. Um, so she, her one was absolutely horrendous as well. And then she didn't take it down. And, because you know, she was out. Because she said, I was out in the sun having a lovely day with my lovely family. Well, mm. you know, you've got half a million um, followers. Um, and Rachel Riley has 770,000 or something. And these, these, these tweets are liked and then shared and then shared again and then shared again. And it's so irresponsible. Actually, in The Independent and the number of papers, Guardian as well, you know, that, that talks about this being a racist tweet, said, what, what, what moved them to so quickly say that? So there is a push, obviously, where, you know, Channel 4's come under stick. Channel 4 have issued a very sort of light sort of kind of caution. The, 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 Imagine the, if it was said the other way around. The, the important Imagine. thing to, to understand here is this is, this is a totally false conflation 
of two things. And I think it's just particularly telling uh, that uh, when it happens the other way round, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of trying to kind of silence anyone who is uh, fighting for Palestine's, the Palestinian cause or, or, you know, wanting to, fighting for the cause of humanity, wanting to stop the aggression. It just strikes me as as Lots telling of people saying um, nonsense that you know not spouting this kind of stuff and and clearly aligning yourself. I think what what happens here as well. There's a little bit of a passive aggressive thing that goes on as well. In that you what happens? Can I just say this just quickly? Mm. Um, people like this express a strong opinion and then pretend they haven't expressed such a strong opinion in order to say that when people push back against the sort of lies and the racism underlying what they're saying they can then say why am i being why am i being victim i'm i'm the victim here i'm the victim here you know she, she and they have pushed out such hostile attitudes towards anyone who has queried what's going on in the israel gaza conflict so mm -hmm. for it to come back and for the apology to be so mealy mouthed is just it telling, really apology. Is telling it wasn't really an apology and can can we just all take a minute and actually think about if it was the other way around oh well well, well we know yeah and exactly. if it, and if somebody on the telly had said something that was even vaguely anti-semitic mm. where would we be mm. absolutely if this had been conflated if this had been confl conflated with some kind of you know the suggestion being something awful was happening because of a jewish person uh you know unconnected to anything that was actually going on it would rightly be called out as anti-semitic yeah Islamophobia just isn't given the same. Well, same. and on, on that note, I just quickly well, let's end on and, and James O'Brien. The just, pain of that. Just just speaking back to the whole Iran. Why can't the British Foreign Secretary I answer the question? You don't, you don't even have to want him to give the answer that you want. You just have to tell me why can't he answer? What's the point of having international diplomacy if our most senior international diplomat can't answer a question about the rightness or wrongness, the wisdom or foolishness of an act by Israel that under every single reading, whether you're the president of the Benjamin Netanyahu fan club or whether you are the polar opposite of that, whatever that might be, you, you, you recognise that the attack on the consulate in Damascus, it's why we were talking about it on Friday. Friday's show was fascinating because... It's not where we started, but almost all of the conversations sort of bottlenecked down towards that consulate in Damascus and that perception of double standards or whatever you want to call it. But you don't need to have skin in the game to answer this question. Why can't the British Foreign Secretary simply provide an answer to the question of whether or not Israel was right to attack the consulate in Damascus? Because if they hadn't, then we wouldn't today be talking about an unprecedented military assault upon Israel by Iran. And let's, voila. Voila. And just finally on that, let's not forget, Iran's assault had no, it, had, it was programmed and done with weaponry in a way that wasn't going to cause any kind of catastrophes, and it didn't, easily intercepted. There were zero deaths by one tragic Arab child in the desert, Bedouin boy, Bedouin bo boy oh, or girl, well, girl I think. Well, yeah. um, so there was virtually, virtually, let's say virtually zero casualties, but this has to be called out and condemned by our government still infinitely more than either A, the hit on the consulate in Damascus, or B, more importantly and tellingly, the continued assault and the illegal settlements, I will not stop talking about. Every single day, if you go to any of the Arab media in the region, the West Bank is getting worse and worse. Today, today, it's being reported that the government of Netanyahu has sanctioned 40 more, 40 illegal settlements in East Jerusalem. Under the cover of war, they are expanding. They are and no one's talking about this in almost in no, a curious in twist. The... Go and have a look. It's a twist Go that the West look. is only still kind of going, let's talk about humanitarian aid so that they can still gobble up more of Palestine. It's out, outrageous. But I want to end on a fun note. Look at this shot from... I, love you. I just It enrages me, the injustice and the inability of so-called intelligent people with numbers to be able to see it. Look, this is in Montana. Oh! Uh, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, 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 uh. Just a rogue elephant. <laughs> Where did you come from? No one knows. <laughs> it's just an elephant walking through the street in Montana. But look it. Oh it, my no. god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.
Emily and Butte, the circus elephant got loose. Took it in. Oh, in. <laughs> She's off to get a burger. What a sweetie. Anyway, there you go. We've got to go. Yeah. Bye, lovely. Have a lovely day. Something will be landing. A vlog will be landing later.